welcome to the Impact Tuning Tune Jitsu class. I'm Nate Raper, registered piano technician. I've been tuning with an impact hammer since day one of my tuning career right out of high school here. And uh, we're going to show you exactly how to get good results out of an impact hammer, how to avoid bad results, and uh, just to get how, how to get the most mileage out of this tool. So we're going to start out with some core concepts. First off, the um, formula for damaging your body. The mathematical formula is stress times repetition equals damage. So the more times you do something wrong, in other words, stress times repetition equals damage. In other words, you can get into a car accident, and that's a single repetition, and you can have damage that prevents you from comfortably tuning a piano. You can also do the same motion improperly, um, uh, an improper motion the same way over and over and over and over and over that may not, you know, you could get away with it once or twice, but over the course of 5, 10, 15, 40 years of tuning pianos, it's going to cause you an injury that prevents you from comfortably doing your job. It's the same thing. So we'd like to avoid that. And the way we can do that is by making our workflow faster, first of all, and number two, making our workflow smarter. In other words, avoiding repetitions and avoiding stress. We have to approach it from both angles at the same time. Second core concept, sphere of mechanical advantage. You have in front of your body at all times uh, a sphere roughly the size of a beach ball in which your body has the maximum mechanical, um, nervous, electrical, um, cardiovascular uh, advantages. This area of space in front of your body is where you are going to naturally come to in order to do fine motor control and high strength uh, procedures or, or any action that you take. If I'm repinning, repinning a center pin flange, I'm going to do it right here unless my only light is somewhere above my head and, and I've just got to work that way once. I'm not going to do multiple repetitions of that because it's going to cause me additional stress. Um, if you're in any kind of a, a, a life critical um, uh, profession or, or activity where, where things have to be done right, they'll teach you to do it right here, whether it's uh, jujitsu or if, if you're a police uh, a policeman with a, with a firearm that needs to be reloaded. It's all going to be right here. Um, so we want to do the same thing when we're doing our day-to-day -day work, when we're tuning pianos. We want to work in this area. If we're working up here or uh, if we're working out, out to the side or anywhere outside of this range, uh, anytime you can use your body where you have this maximum mechanical motion, mechanical advantage with your motions, that's a huge advantage to you. So let's take a look at some ways of tuning pianos that take us outside of that range of motion. Let's look at a, uh, a rigid type lever. This happens to be a, a very good rigid type lever. Tuning a piano, a vertical piano with this type of rigid lever takes me outside of this range of proper mechanical motion. I no longer have that mechanical advantage. When we're tuning a grand piano, this is a very comfortable motion. This is a motion that our body has been very well adapted to and designed for. Oh, this is a motion that works well. This is a motion that does not cause any serious damage. If you've already got um, a body injury that, um, if, if you're already, if you are experiencing pain from this motion, it's probably because you've damaged your body somewhere else. This is not a motion that we're going to damage our bodies doing naturally. This is a very normal motion. Vertical pianos. So sometime in the history of pianos, 1840s, something like that, the bean counters at uh, the piano manufacturers enslaved the engineers and, f and found out that they could sell more pianos more cheaply by flipping them on their edge. And we as piano tuners see them on a dealer floor. We say, what on earth is this? What is this thing? And they say, it's a piano, and you're going to tune it. So we take our existing rigid type lever, and we go and tune the piano. That's what we had to do to put bread on the table. It turns out that that's a really bad motion, as I just said. 
This is where all the stress comes from. This is where we damage our bodies. This is where we put ourselves out of business. To recap, this is outside of our sphere of mechanical advantage. I'm losing all my strength. I'm losing all my precision when I'm moving up here. It's That makes it harder to tune the piano. It makes it harder to get precision. That means higher stress and more repetitions up here. So let's look at the other ways to do it. The impact hand. This is what we're all here to, this is what you're watching the video to see. The impact hammer is three basic parts. This is where the magic comes from, can. Now this rotates about 45 degrees, and it rotates freely, and then it ends its travel. It ends it abruptly, and it transfers any energy that's been multiplied by the handle from the weight. So I'm using a swinging motion. I'm tossing that weight. I'm investing energy over time. I'm in my sphere of mechanical advantage here, and I'm just tossing the weight and moving the impact handle, and that's moving the pin. So instead of coming up here to hold it, you're working directly on the pin. It's like you just grew about eight inches. You grew about eight, eight inches taller. That means you can sit down on a lot more pianos. On these spinet pianos, you don't have to reach down into them. On the tall upright pianos, um, most of you, even I at six foot four, do still have to stand on some of those instruments, but it's rare. Those, uh, those instruments are rarer and rarer. Um, work with the natural motion of your body. So when you're using this, um, you, like any hammer, you've got a position that you're going to try to put it in. With a traditional rigid type lever, with a traditional rigid type lever, you're typically taught to Come as close to 12 o'clock to the string, parallel to the string as you can. There's different schools of thought with that, but uh, this is the traditional way that people are taught to tune with this tool. With the impact hammer, it's basically the same concept, but what's more important here is that we're working with the natural range of motion with the body. So I can move my hand my arm very comfortably like this, or my left arm, I can move it very comfortably like this, in towards my body. It's uncomfortable for me, and you can do this with your arm while you're watching this, it's uncomfortable for you to move it out toward, out away from your body. It can be done, you do have that motion, and it's good to stretch that muscle on occasion, but this is not where your body's natural at all. You have the most power and control when you're doing this. So, when you're aligning the impact hammer, when you're choosing a spot for it to go to, and this is something that becomes subconscious and automatic as you use the tool, just like any other tool, um, this is not the one that I would opt for if I had a choice. I would opt for this position. I'm lifting the hammer against gravity, but I'm working with my body mechanics, which is much more important. Also, when I'm moving in the pin, when I'm moving the pin so the pitch goes flat, I can use gravity and just drop the hammer a little bit. I may even keep my thumb on it here to control the ball a little bit on a loose pin block for the very, very precise control of the tool. Let's get into the fun part and talk about the three stances of Toon Jitsu. These are the three methods, the, the three basic ways to approach the impact hammer that anytime you're having an issue with tuning the input with an impact hammer, anytime where things are just frustrating you, um, you're, you're trying to get this to work, but it's just not working for you, come back to one of these three stances and, uh, and, and come back to it in its, pure, in its purest possible form. And that will help reset things for you. It's, it's worth noting at this time that these Three basic stances can be combined and blended together. But once again, if you're having an issue with it, distill it down to its pure form and look at your uh, look at your stance, look at your technique, and that way you can diagnose things and come up with uh, with solutions to problems. The first and most elemental method is maiden's fan. This is the basic, simplest way to approach an impact hammer. This is the most uh, commonly taught method, and that is to approach the impact hammer directly. 
It's a pure forearm rotation. Now, anytime that I'm working with an impact hammer, I'm not holding it. I'm not gripping it. I'm just encouraging it to move one direction or another and not to come off the pin. So I've got a contact point here where I'm pushing it onto the pin. And I've got a contact point here and here. I'm using my, my hand, the upper part of my hand, and the inside of my thumb. And I'm tossing it. You need some escapement. As a piano technician, you're probably familiar with the term escapement or let off or drop. All these things talk about escapement or after touch in a piano. This is the point where the hammer move t moves towards the string and somewhere in the action, depending on the type of action we've got, the powertrain, the mechanical holding of the key to the hammer is disconnected before it hits the string. Otherwise, it's just pounding into the string and we've lost our control, we've lost our power, and we're inappropriately using the tool. Where when you do that with the impact hammer specifically, something that the hammer doesn't quite experience to uh, any major degree, when I'm rotating and I have no escapement here, I'm aggressively participating in the impact. The brass weight here is extremely good at taking stress. These little muscles and tendons and joints in your hand, in your arm, uh, and your elbow are not designed for that. They're designed for either rapid motion or gradual pushing or, or, or precision, but they're not designed for impact. And that's what you're experiencing when you do this. You're also, once again, losing your power and control at the same time. So this is the this is a pure forearm rotation. There's our string. Now when you're starting out with the impact hammer, pro tip here, just like regulation on an action. If it's a piano that's not designed for finesse, a home piano, something that you're not going to see more than once a year. I'm not going to set that let off below, say, an eighth of an inch. Maybe even farther than that. For a concert instrument, when it, ha when it has to be right, and you really want the most touch out of this instrument, and you can get away with a sixteenth of an inch of let off or less. Just, you, you push it to the very edge. Now, when you're very skilled with an impact hammer, you really know what's going on. You're firing on all 12 cylinders with this tool. Um, you can do this kind of a motion. And you can't see that I'm not letting off here before I, uh, before I actually contact the end of travel. But I am. Uh, when you're starting out, use a little bit of an exaggerated motion. Toss that hammer. Let it bounce back into your hand. Feel it hit the pin and come back into your fingers. And it helps to be on the right string. Maiden's fan. Once again, this is the most fundamental method for tuning with an impact hammer. Anytime you're really having an issue, come back to Maiden's fan. This is the best method, especially when you're tuning a mid-sized piano. You can reach directly onto it. Don't get lazy and rotate down here. You want to reach directly onto the impact hammer and pure forearm rotation. You're using this muscle and this muscle. If you feel that as you tune, you'll notice that those are the um, parts of your body that you're using to move that pin. The second method is branch in the wind. 
this is mostly for taller upright pianos uh, above the uh, studio and above. Um, something larger than a console, full blow action. You've got some space to really put your uh, um, your forearm down below it. Now this is the this is the um, the hold here. Once again, hold is the wrong word, but I've got contact patch, pushing the hammer against the string, and we're not really pushing it, we're just making sure that it doesn't come away from the pin. I've got this part of my fingers is going to push it towards the flat side, and this part of my thumb is going to push it toward the sharp side. Sharp, flat, contact. Sharp, flat, contact. Let's get a look at how this uh, looks on the piano. Switch to a taller string here. You can get some very accurate control out of this, and um, even maybe more so than Branch in the Wind. And the reason for that is you, you have an extremely efficient economy of motion. Uh, just like you do with Maiden's fan, but we've got a better feel for the lever because we're working with it up here. Now, the obvious question is why don't I just work with, work up here with Maiden's fan? Well, here's why. Uh, it's very hard to get that escapement in. It's hard to control it at the, uh, at the center of rotation here, and my economy of motion is terrible. You'll notice very quickly if you try to tune this way. It's just very cumbersome. So Branch in the Wind allows you to tune up there. Without losing your control. And you've kind of got your escapement built in because you're just pushing off with your fingers here when you're moving it flatwise, or pushing off with your thumb when you're moving it sharp. And here I am just using gravity. motion is one hand clapping or Beck and Smith. Matrix joke there. This is a motion that is excellent on very small pianos, spinets and the like. Basically we're going to reach with our forearm parallel to the pin block and I've got my hand either right here or right here, somewhere on the head there, um, and, and maybe even in the, on the extension. And I'm pulling the hammer into my hand with the um, pinball machine part of my uh, flipper here. Switch it on me. And once again, I'm tight pin block, I can usually just let it go, let it down with gravity, and I'm controlling the fall with my fingers. I can actually push off with my thumb as well. Just toss it down, snap it up. For a pitch raise, I can very quickly move the pitch to exactly where I want. Three deadly errors of tune jitsu. We've covered Maiden Span, Branch in the Wind, and One Hand Clapping. Now, I've, t I've taught this class quite a bit in person, and there's always a hands on session. Um, 
it's always very interesting to watch what people do when they see this hammer for the first time and they, they're, they're tuning their first strings with this tool. And the three things that people tend to do that absolutely destroys their ability to tune with this tool are these three errors. First off is hand blocks the sun. Hand blocks the sun. We're very used to tuning up here. This is not the best way to tune with an impact hammer. It, once again, uh, we covered this earlier, but it's, it's so worth noting here that if you're tuning up here, you're losing all your economy of motion, repetition, and you're introducing more stress into your body. This is a very poor way to address this tool. It just doesn't get you the control that you're looking for. And it's very quick to fix that with maiden spans. Cobra peers above the grass. It's actually hard to do on this piano because I've got this fall board here. Um, but Cobra peers above the grass is lazy maiden span, in other words, or an improper branch in the wind. This is a very comfortable way to hold my hand. Um, the blood is flowing, the tendons aren't stressed, my muscles aren't, uh, I'm not for being forced to use my muscles to hold it into the position like I am here with Cobra peers over the grass. This is a very uncomfortable motion. So you're using your wrist muscles and all these little parts of your wrist that are designed for finesse. They're designed for fine control of the fingers and you're trying to use them for power. It's easy to understand how that could cause damage and lose precision. You're using the wrong tool for the right job. Rather than use the small wrist muscles, use these large muscles on the sides of your arms. And the final method is broken doorknob. This is when we are abandoning the concept of escapement. You can never get away from the concept of escapement when you're working with this tool or the piano in general. Now it's very common to see someone tuning with this for the first time. They will clench down on the tool. It's a caveman response, right? You pick up a new club, what do you do with it? You clench down onto it. Yeah, the, the experienced caveman who's taken down a lot of saber-toothed tigers, he's got this loose grip on his club, and he just flicks it. But um, we've got the same concept here. That escapement is so critical. Don't aggressively participate in that impact. I just can't say that enough. Do not aggressively participate in the impact. You lose all your power, you lose all your control, and you experience the damage instead of using this brass weight and this cam mechanism to do the work for you. Some questions about how to tune with an impact hammer. How, how, how do I learn to tune with an impact hammer? First, how long does it take to learn this tool? And there's two approaches that you're coming from. Either you're an experienced tech, You've got a lot of technique built up with this rigid tool. You've, you've, you've tuned thousands of pianos this way. So for someone like that, I have to say, listen, you have to remember how long it took you to learn how to use that rigid type lever. You have to remember how long it took to develop that skill because it took you a long time, I guarantee you. Um, you've already got the skills required to walk out of the customer's house with, uh, with a paycheck um, and do a good job. You know how to diagnose issues with the action. You know how to deal with the customer in a friendly way that makes them want to give you money at the end of the appointment. Uh, you know how to book your next appointment. All these things, the, the unison, the temperament, all this stuff that you had to master at the same time while you were learning the, uh, the, the hammer technique itself. Those are all in place for you. Now all you have to focus on is one thing, and that's the new hammer technique. Remember how long it took you to learn that first one. And this is going to be faster. It's going to be faster than the original hammer technique that you learned. So keep that in mind as you go through. Be patient with it. Um, 
those of you who are a new technician, first off, you're starting out in a great place. I know from experience, this is my story. Um, when you are learning to tune up here, okay, on a virtual piano especially, once again, you're outside of the sphere of mechanical advantage, you're at a huge disadvantage, you're using every muscle in your body to move the move this pin sharp and flat. You're moving your uh, your side muscles here. Uh, we're not using anatomical muscle terms here just to make it simple. Uh, you're using your, your, your back muscles. You're using your leg muscles to brace yourself and probably hold against the key bed if you're like me. You're using your neck muscles. You're using your under forearm muscles. Uh, you're using your finger muscles to move that pin every single moment one of those muscles is being controlled. Every single one of those muscles is, is having to take part of your, your mental processing time in order to, to move that pin exactly the way you want. In addition, you've got this concept of flag pulling. So this is something as a new technician you're not aware of at all. The experienced technicians know all about it and they probably use it to their advantage. Um, once again, whether they are aware of that or not, I've examined a lot of people as they tune pianos. And it's very common for somebody, whether they're aware of it or not, to push down a little bit, just to relieve a little bit of tension in, in the non-seeing lane, to allow this to, to, to flow and, and the tension to be exactly where they want, or for the opposite, to just tweak up a little bit to make sure that that non-seeing lane tension is a little bit stronger so that it can stabilize. These are things that we've, some of us have uh, deliberately incorporated into our technique, and all of us, um, have unconsciously incorporated into our technique because it's something you can't avoid. When you're tuning with a rigid lever, it's very, very difficult to avoid bending this pin because you're out here. If you're using like the Levitan C-type lever and you're, you're directly in line with the pin block and you're moving it, then you can do a pure rotational movement. That's impossible to do out here because you're always leaning into it or leaning away from it just a little bit. Even when you're pushing directly in this angle, it's also pushing in towards this way. It's very, very difficult to impossible to avoid this. That's one of these factors that the new technician is unconsciously taking into account with the mental equation that you're building up. What happens when I do this to the lever? How does the, the string react? And so on and so forth. You're getting used to, you're getting to develop a language to communicate with the piano. Now, with an impact hammer, when you rotate this and toss that weight, the exact same thing is happening every time. It's flight pulling it the exact same amount per force every single time. In other words, instead of this flight pulling issue being a variable that you have to somehow try to figure out and to incorporate, now it's a constant. It's something that's automatically incorporated. So it's much easier to learn. It is easier to learn an impact hammer than it is to learn a rigid lever. If you take nothing away from everything I just said, take that. It's easier to learn the impact hammer. So how long does it take to learn to a tune with an impact hammer? How long does it take to learn to fall in love? I teach this class in person. And it's always interesting to see people using the impact hammer for the first time. And for some people, it's love at first sight. And for other people, it's after 25 years, I've washed your clothes, milked your cow. After 25 years, why talk about love right now? It takes time. Some people, it takes time. And if you're that person, just persevere because it's beautiful at the end, I promise you. Second thing I have to say, say when you're learning the impact tuning system, start out, if you have the option, uh, especially if you're an advanced tech, start out on rough pitch correction passes. You come to a piano, it's 15, 20, 25 plus cents flat. You're bringing the pitch up, just do a separate pass. You don't have to worry about the fine control. You don't have to worry about flushing every unison if you're using a cyber tuner or, or getting every unison dead beat pure. You don't have to worry about stability or hammer control. All you have to worry about is tossing that weight, getting used to the feel on the tool, and then moving on to the next string. 
do that as quickly as possible. Eventually, you will forget to switch over to your rigid lever, and at that point, you arrive. You've graduated impact tuning school, and you're ready to get your diploma and uh, tune fully with the impact hammer. Make the tool really pay for itself. So start out on those rough tuning passes. Most, not all, but most, with the exception of the flag pulling issue that I just mentioned primarily, most of your uh, ideas and concepts of how to, the, the language of how you talk to the piano with your tuning hammer transfers over one to one, it's exactly the same. You're, you're rotating the pin the same way, um, you, you need a little bit of tension on the non-singing length and so on and so forth. Uh, you, if you're if your final motion with your rigid lever is to push a little bit sharp just so that you aren't moving the pitch but you've got a little bit of extra tension, if you like to come down onto it and you find that works stable for you, if you're a pounder, you like to pound that, the pitch down to where it's supposed to go, if you've got good results, keep doing it that way. That's fine. You don't have to change a thing. Uh, the impact hammer is not going to change any of that. One more idea here. And this is something that I wish that I had been smart enough to come up with. Um, I started out with my right hand and all the way to the treble from the bass, and that's how I was taught to tune from day one. This is a, a tool that I can get away with that for a career. And so I haven't personally developed the technique to switch to my alternate hand. But if you're picking up an impact hammer for the first time, and this is your first time tuning pianos, you're a new tech, you've been tuning for a few months, or you're an advanced tech with a lot of skills with your right hand, especially if you're the advanced one. You put the tool in your hand, your ear hears flat, you need to move it sharp. There are nervous connections in the bottom of your brain stem all the way down to your fingertips and in the rest of your body that know exactly how to make that motion. Put that pin into exactly the position it needs to be. Talk to the piano, make it move. Now when you put a, a tool in that hand that it's not used to, and your muscle memory is wanting to do a certain thing, you have to fight it, and it creates this feedback uh, frustration loop. You put it in your opposite hand. This is experience that I've been given from other people who have done this and have had great success with it, switching to this opposite hand, all of a sudden you've got a fresh learner. It's a, it's a fresh slate, it's a clean slate, it's ready to receive instruction and, and go up. And for, for those of you who have never picked up tuning with the alternate hand, this is the perfect time to do it. For those of you who are new technicians, this is the perfect time to start off right. Persevere with it. Keep going with it. You will learn this technique. You will master it. If you stick with it, you can't fail. Come back to Maiden's, Maiden's Fan. Come back to Branch in the Wind. Come back to One Hand Clapping. Avoid Cobra Piers over the Grass. Avoid Broken Doorknob. Avoid Hand Blocks the Sun. You'll get it. Thank you so much for watching this class. I hope that you have great success with impact tuning. Please feel free to contact us at tools at Rayburn Piano if you have any issues whatsoever, or call us up. You can visit us at rayburntools.com to see the latest stuff that we've got going on there, and you can also find our latest contact information at that site. Once again, thanks for watching. Best of luck with your impact tuning adventures.